the next couple weeks is to just train hop through the American West, go through a bunch of spots that I had wanted to get to when I was younger, back when I first started on this hobby. Tons of routes that I wanted to ride through Donner Pass, which is the border between California and Nevada, over the Great Salt Lake in Utah. I've wanted to ride through Colorado. And so my plan is kind of to make a triangle between here in Northern California, from there to Denver, go up to Montana to Seattle, and then make a little just triangle of the Western states. If you're wondering what I bring with me, this is kind of a newer addition. I'm bringing my bike because every time I was in Canada, I was like, man, I wish I had my bike. I wish I had my bike. I've got a bag full of food, gallon of water. Uh, you always have to carry a gallon per day of water. That's my sleeping bag, sleeping pad, and backpack full of clothing. Usually what I try to do is a couple pairs of socks, a couple pairs of underwear, one or two good short sleeves, one good long sleeve, something more dressy for if I'm in town or if I'm hitchhiking, a sweater, and then some sort of coat. And then I've also got like cooking utensils in there, my camera, of course, and just a bunch of other random stuff. It sounds like the rail is scraping right now. It sounds like something is coming by soon. I'm pretty hopeful that I'll be able to make this trip within three weeks. I've got to be in Seattle within three weeks. And I try to do most of the things I say I do, otherwise I don't post it, because then it doesn't make for good television. So yeah, this is just where I'm at right now. It's getting a little cold. We've got a little tweaker fire going in the distance. I'll see if I can get a little closer to it so you can actually see it. That's what that orange glow is in the distance over there. And yeah, it does get cold at night here, man. That moist Bay Area air. Yeah, that fire is getting big right now, trash fire. I don't want to get too close to it because, you know, that's people's lives over there. That's just, it's rough. It's, what I'm saying cost of living is insane and sometimes you're just out in a van parked by the railroad tracks luckily this is a place where people seem to be left alone but then that also has the consequence of this definitely is kind of more of a lawless place and I think that represents the West pretty well I love an open box car ride honestly this is just emblematic of the American West and such a great way to start the trip. And I'm sure a lot of you already know this, but definitely find like a rail spike to prop a box car open so that it doesn't close fully. This is as West as it gets, man. Can't wait to see the scenery. I'm probably gonna sleep through it, honestly, and then wake up in the yard, but just very glad to have a ride like this. Yeah, a lot of people died this year. The Colossus of Rhodes moniker writer, the Union Pacific brakeman who's been making that little symbol for the past 50 years on train cars, he died, I think, this year. Hobo Shoestring ended up dying. He got found in a, uh, basically in a river in Tennessee, if I recall correctly. His health was already kind of taking a toll, but who knows what happened there. People who would normally be making videos 
are not anymore. They're retired, and for me, personally, I don't know how many more years of this I got left. I'm not getting any younger, and I'm not getting any less broke. For now, while I am somewhat young-ish, I'll just squeeze everything I can out of it. Anyway, screw these plants. They just ruined my morning. I hate the spikes on these. It is beautiful to look at, but goddamn. I'm gonna change it to thicker socks because these are a mess. Yeah, nothing to do but just wait for the night train into Salt Lake City, basically. I'm just gonna be sitting around here all day in the shade. It's gonna hit about 90 degrees. Hopefully, don't die. I'm already <laughs> just in a t shirt and it's 7 a.m., so we'll see. I might end up frying. Well, I mean, when there's five people throwing in on a house, yeah, 200 bucks a month, all utilities included in that. Dude, that's insane. That's so little money. I could be making like no money and pay my rent. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even have a job, dude. I was just hustling the money, bro. And then, and then some. I came here on this field, and like there at the tree where you also uh, chilled seen like a bunch of lights and people so I was just going there and there were like four four people four hobos, riders like hobos yeah like the first days we never really found any train because no one of us wanted to go inside the yard at daytime hmm. but then at night time we couldn't really see the trains because the yard was so packed and then we just fall asleep and they were like yeah you need to climb inside the yard but then no one climbed inside the yard of them, so yeah. I was like, how, how do we get the fuck out? Yeah, those old heads can just kick it for like days and yeah. not care. And then we started to, or I started sometimes to climb in, got seen by workers a lot of times, at daytime. And then on the fourth day, we seen like a train pull in and we checked it out. And we found, a, like we tracked the, the train and it was leaving in one and a half hours. and. We found a gondola to ride, so everything was perfect. I was fucking happy because I just wanted to fucking leave. Of course. And then two of those people who said, "Yeah, let, let, let us quick go to to the homebound camp to get some drugs." They went to the other homebound camp, like down there, mm -hmm. to try and get drugs there. And it took them another like 30 or 20 minutes. And then they came back with the drugs and I was like, yeah, okay, let's fucking go on the train. Like I was thinking that in my mind, mm -hmm. but nope. They needed to use the, drug, the drugs at first. So we were sitting around here for 20 minutes so that they can get the fucking drugs to use. Like the one guy used needle. We went inside the yard and after we crossed the first string, we seen the fucking train leaving the yard i was i was just boiling man i, I was so mad because i was stuck here four days <laughs> with people who should be fucking experienced and then we walked across the fucking bridge so he can maybe get some money with his guitar oh no only playing like every 10 minutes and then waiting for 20 minutes <laughs> and didn't really play and didn't really interact with any people so we didn't even get any money so we walked all the way back so we walked like one and a half hours for no reason. The train pulled in. There were some broken containers that people broke in. So then the, the some bolts showed up and fucking like knocked against the containers and screamed, get out, get out and shit with flashlights. So we needed to run and hide inside the bushes. And then they left luckily at some point. So we grabbed the ride, but we were three people on a shitty ride. Three people in the IM while it was fine. Yeah. So it was fine to leave, but then we went inside Sparks, and for whatever reason, the train worked four hours inside Sparks. It was hot as fuck, the sun was starting to burn, and then we stopped right next to this one transmission tower where some random workers did a training for like two or three hours. So they were climbing up and down on that fucking tower right next to our car. It could have gone so fucking wrong. And then we left, and on the way, the actual the train just broke down and started to stop and go and stop and go and the worker went all the way down and looked at the cars and everything 
and then eventually we stopped in Winnemucca or whatever the shit all is called. So our car ended up standing right next to the fucking Amtrak. Like the worker seen us but he didn't call us in, he was fine with us being on the train but then there was the, that fucking old motherfucking snitch on the Amtrak station that seen us and he was like, yeah the riders on the train, the riders on the train. So they needed to call us in. You can't not call us in if someone tells them they're riders on a train. So we just got off and police got called, but they, they just got called because they the fucking containers that people broke in. They were kind of some cars down. Oh God. So they didn't even talk to us, but then we were stranded just in the middle of Nevada at a place where they don't fucking crew change. I ran to a highway next to it on Europe. We were standing there for like, six hours. Like, I was standing there, the other guys didn't really do anything. <laughs> but I, I just wanted to get the fuck out of there. I was standing for four hours in the sun with a sign near Elko. And then one guy stopped after four hours. And he didn't even need it to go in that direction, but he just picked us up. Because meth is such a big thing out here, sometimes a lot of these places by the railroad get really tweaked out and then your worry is not dealing with the law so much as dealing with just methed out people, which is its own kind of danger. At least with uh, a lawman of sorts, you can kind of predict how they're going to act, but when you've got like people kind of tweaked out on the side of the railroad, that's sort of less predictable. Not that it's ever good to be in that position in life, but it is in some ways a little better for me that this kind of stuff exists because then there's a certain degree to which they allow it to happen and then they're not as worried about just people being by the railroad tracks generally. But that said, we are entering the yard, so I am going to stay down despite what the camps are looking like here. This definitely is an interesting window to uh, what's going on in this part of the country for some of you, I'm sure. I've gotten out of Nevada what I've wanted to get out of it, honestly, and it is kind of greener than usual because it's definitely been more of a rainy season, but if this is the greenest it gets after like tons of rain and this is the end result, there's other better western states. The whole state's kind of a snooze fest for me scenery-wise. I uh, rolled through on Amtrak before. This is my first time doing it in open air. It's a little nicer there, but I think I'd rather just blow through. There's nothing really worth stopping for for me. Uh, and just go all the way to Salt Lake and ride across the Great Salt Lake. It's hot as hell. Had to take off my socks, take off my shirt. Might have to take off my pants at some point. Air still feels pretty thin, but what can you do? Still haven't really acclimated to it yet. The scenery is definitely getting a little more interesting. It was the same irrigated river plus mountains in the background combo for like a hundred miles. I went to sleep for an hour, woke up, exact same scenery. So now it's actually changing a little bit, which is cool. I've got to get off in the next town because uh, I want to actually ride through the Salt Lake in the daytime and I need to guarantee that. I need battery, I need water my water with. I want to get some hot food and just some other supplies in general. Damn, love seeing these old cars. was cool until the mosquitoes started swarming. Damn sunset. Got the mosquito swarm coming and now we got this stupid speed restriction. So if we were going fast it would plow through these damn mosquitoes. 
But since we're not, and we gotta go around this bend really slowly, I'm just getting eaten up essentially. Managed to dodge some work vehicles. Managed to bag this grainer that should be going over the salt lake and the salt flats. Anyway, it's 5 a.m. I'm gonna nap and then hopefully I wake up in time for the scenery. This train is so long, you can actually see when it goes on the curves, it's like probably at least a hundred cars long. Quite actually the middle of nowhere. I think we're still in Nevada. Should be crossing into Utah soon, into the uh, Salt Flats. And then going over the Salt Lake, which is a ride I've wanted to do for many, many years. Really, I'm looking forward to crossing into some of those weird geographical features of Utah. Finally moving again after four hours of being sighted out. I guess something must have been broken because a work truck was driving up and down the train a bunch of times and then I had to hide in the little grainer hole, you know, just to not blow up my spot. So, yeah, I don't even know exactly where I am, honestly. Even the offline map, it didn't want to load. So, I'm sort of kind of lost on where I am. I think we're entering Utah if we haven't already. Thank goodness I have a, a bike too because you know I could bike down this service road until I hit even a town of like 40 people would be helpful but hiking that way this is just middle of nowhere dude. Imagine doing this without wheels I would well I wouldn't cry but I would just very stoically hike with my water. Luckily I have a good amount of water and food. I could probably stretch it like three, four days if I absolutely needed to. And by then I'm sure I would get back to some sort of normal town. It gets remote out here, man. So the background here is getting more and more white. I'm thinking these might be patches of salt because we're approaching the uh, salt flats. And obviously that's a consequence of, because um, that's all spread out through the salt lake, of course. Yana wana ho, yana ne, e ne no e. Yana ho, yana wana ho, yana ne, e ne no e. Yana ho, yana ne, yana ho, yana e ne no e. Yana ho, yana wana ho, yana ne. We <laughs> Oh yes, I love you, honey. I don't care if you're married, I still love you. I'll get you yet. Oh yes, I love you, honey. I don't care if you're married. I will drive you home in my one-eyed Ford. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yo. 
We ya he ya he yo ya he yo ha. We ya he yo ya he yo ha. Ya ha ya ha yo. We ya he ya he yo ya he yo ha. We ya he yo ya he yo ha. Ya ha ya ha yo. Oh yes, I love you, honey. I don't care if you're married. I still love you. I'll get you yet. Yeah, yeah, yo. Oh yes, I love you, honey. I don't care if you're married. I will drive you home in my one-eyed Ford. Yeah, yeah, yo. Yeah. We are yo. We are, we are yo. I'm in Salt Lake City right now. The plan is to chill here for the next day, one more night, and then try to bag a train to Denver. I don't love Salt Lake, honestly, as a city. It's very white, parentheses derogatory not a whole lot going on around there. I guess it would be cool to check out some of the architecture, get some photos, and then maybe sleep on the roof of that CrossFit building that I slept on six years ago when I first came here. So during my first trip out west, really my first time traveling anywhere, first time out in a boxcar, first time hitchhiking, 10 days on the road with no plan, I ended up here in Salt Lake and I ended up sleeping on the roof of this CrossFit building. And what I did was I got up by climbing these little rungs, basically. They're big enough for me to put my fingers on them, and I had a little backpack at the time, so I just went up these all the way to the roof and just laid my sleeping bag out and watched the cars on the highway go by all night. Yeah, I might tell the full story of that someday, I've got the full story somewhere on my Patreon. If you want to sign up to that and send me your address, I'll send you some photo prints. Normally, I think I would just had that at the higher $10 tier, but just sign up for whatever. Shoot me a message on there with your address. I'll send you some photos. I've given away a ton of photos and zines for free already for the love of the game, but uh, would be nice to actually get something in exchange for it. Anyway, yeah, nostalgia. Okay, back on the rooftop of this building that I slept on. It's super safe. Uh, the thing is my bag is so fucking heavy that I literally fell off trying to climb it. So that's a little annoying. And I do just want to go on that Colorado trip, just to kind of check off all the things that I wanted to do when I first started hopping trains. Years in the making, many years in the making. I'm gonna go to bed, have a good night. Fuck yes, dude, I'm super glad I got out of there. I've heard so many horror stories of people being stuck there for four, three, four, five days without being able to catch a train. And I did it within a few hours, and after this fucking, after the bull told me off, basically. Again, dude, nothing personal. I just gotta get where I gotta get. You made me play the game of being sneaky, and I appreciate you for that. in the rear of the train too. It's not a very long train. Maybe like 30 cars at best. So that means they won't see me. You know, when I first started traveling, someone told me how much they love cold Chef Boyardee, which I was like, no way, dude, that's tweaked out. I like to warm this shit up and have it warm. But right now, Rolling down the Colorado countryside in this crater, I just do not have the energy to take my stove out, try to deal with the wind knocking the flames out. And 
I'm just gonna eat this thing straight out of the can, just cold. Cause I just, I just don't have the heart for it right now. Don't think that just because you're in the middle of nowhere you won't get kicked off a train. They absolutely will do that shit. It's happened to me time and again. So I may not fully be in the clear. It is a weekday. There's plenty of track workers, maintenance of way vehicles. So I can't be totally just out in the open. You do gotta be a little smart. Dudes, we are crawling. You hear that squealing? That ungodly squealing? I don't think we're stopping so much as just struggling. Another one. Start, stop, start, stop. Looks like we're waiting for a train considering we're on double track. Yeah, these are beautiful places to stop. I don't particularly mind, but I would like to get to Denver eventually. We're heading to Denver. It should be there in a couple hours. You can see the whole metro area down there at the bottom of the mountain. Okay, situation in Denver is kind of grim. First of all, it's the return of my nemesis, the needle grass. So that's going to be in my shoes for the next couple days. Second off, I tried catching a train that was the right consist, meaning it was the right makeup of cars, but it just blew through, so, so much for that. And in doing so, by biking on the gravel, I earned myself a flat tire, so I've got to go fix that. And then third thing is my water gallon, because it's fallen so much, has developed a leak. So you'll notice that it is just pissing out water right now. So I've got to replace that. If it was easy, it wouldn't be as interesting. Oh, also, aggressive tweaker situation here in Denver. I've only been sleeping four to six hours a night. So I am a little uh, insomniatic lately. Also, it's 94 degrees and I'm in all black. So, so far, nothing today is going right. Okay, my condition has improved quite a bit. Got myself a flat fix. Got myself some more food. New jug of water. What's the deal with the fucking tweaker situation here? Uh, it's just, it's getting pretty tough. Uh, it's kind of always been a little... I think this place just generally is like... It's urban, but it's just hard to sustain that sort of shit. Yeah, it's... it's like after the housing shit that happened, like uh, when... Weed not popular here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Housing went up like three times the price. Fucking hell. Fucked yeah. everyone over, or like a few people got lucky. I, I can't see a future. Yeah. It's house here anytime soon. In Denver, especially, it's fucking horrible. Yeah. Alright, still in Denver. I was too exhausted to bag anything last night. Plus, 
a lot of things wouldn't stop or just seem like they weren't going in the right direction based on what the train was made up of. Last night I went, I guess you'd call it skinny dipping, out in the, the Platte River over there, washed some of my clothes, so now the hot dry sun is going to take care of that fairly quickly. I've hung it over my bike. And I think I'm gonna spend one more night here. Everything's kind of been blowing through, so maybe I'm just not in the best waiting spot. So I think I'm gonna try to find like a better spot to catch these trains, because so far where I've been, I've not been having a lot of luck. When I'm in town, I try very much not to look like I'm riding trains. A lot of people, you can clock them from a mile away. All these punk kids wearing all black, that's not punk at all, that's conformity. Okay, still in Denver, the city remains a mess and very tricky to hop out of, but I think I'm on the right train car. I was tailing it for maybe a mile and a half to two miles just on my bike to one, catch up to it, and two, score a ride. It's a long ride, but I'm fully supplied, which is good. Feels like I would have been stuck in Denver for a long time uh, if I didn't catch this. So I'm really glad I have bagged it. And let's hope it's actually gonna get going at some point. We are rolling after a couple hours just being stalled in the yard. I'm gonna hide here in this little grainer cubby just because we're passing by some yard work trying not to get seen. Yeah, busy ass intermodal yard right next to me. Better to stay hidden. Well, ended up in Wyoming for the third time in three years, which is probably more than uh, the average doctor's recommendation. Yeah, it's a long ride through Wyoming. It's a big state and quite a ways to go before reaching where I need to be in Montana. So just gonna enjoy it. Never rode on this uh, subdivision before. So we'll see how it is. I think Wyoming is a lot of this, which is okay. Again, dude, dirty face in the rain. That's so lame. I'm hiding under my sleeping bag. I'm dry for now, but once the sleeping bag starts soaking, it's gonna be really fucking shitty. The one plus side is this might take care of some of the insects, this moth problem I've been having. So right now what's happening, this is hail, this is hail that's falling, these little things that are jumping. <laughs> One of them just flew into my mouth. I was like, what the hell insect is this? But it's literal ice from the sky, 88 degrees. Looks like it should clear up soonish, as you can see by the sun. But always interesting to see hail. Scenery's cleared up, but this train is painfully slow. We're siding out about every hour.
Okay, found what should be a pretty good northbound waiting spot. The effects of sleep deprivation have not been kind to me. My mind was just on total low brain power mode. Yesterday was kind of shutting down last night, had to sleep, passed out for a good 10 hours or so. And I would say I'm ready to start my day, but I definitely feel some uh, sleep debt. Some woman was telling me that the effects of sleep deprivation for a couple days are kind of equivalent to you taking meth for a whole week, which I don't know that it's that extreme, but damn, have I been fried. I think this is a decent waiting area. It doesn't look like there's anyone who owns this property. If I'm lucky, I'll get a daytime ride through this uh, canyon and up into Montana. But again, that's a big if I'm lucky, so we'll see. I don't really know what this animal is. Looks like a chirping prairie dog situation. <laughs> Funny. I passed its hole before, I wondered what lived there. God, I passed its hole sounds so wrong. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, been parked here for a couple hours. Probably gonna be here all evening, honestly. Dead yard blues, nothing has happened for hours. Sorry to report on that, but it's like that sometimes. Bus tickets to the next town are like 50 bucks, so fuck that. I would rather just grab a freight. Look at how chunky this train is, dude. Here's the deal. Got myself some prime riverside camping. We rolled into the town of Graybull at about midnight and have been stalled for probably five hours or so. So at that point I'm like, you know what, let me get off the train. Let me grab a cheap motel here. I mean, obviously not tonight because I'm camped out here, but let me grab a cheap motel here for tomorrow 
have a place to charge my stuff properly, wash my ass and recharge. It's not like the next town over is that far away, but I just need like one solid recharge day. I think after two weeks on the road, I deserve it. Still got, what, maybe eight days to get to Seattle? I'll be fine. But this line is slow as hell. I, I didn't think I'd be stopping as at this many towns along the way. Yeah. Anyway, as you can hear, I need to sleep. All right, very bougie thing to do for some of you, but I booked myself a shitty motel room. <laughs> Washing my popcorn smelling clothes over here because there's no real laundromats out here because everyone owns their own house, so why would there be a laundromat out here? And yeah, this train situation is kind of screwed, man. The train that I rode in on yesterday didn't leave for 22 hours and just rolled away like as I pulled up to it an hour ago. So it is a quiet ass yard, I will tell you that much. Might try to hitchhike out tomorrow. I don't know how amenable people are gonna be to that because especially with a bike, it's gonna be harder to really hitch out very far. There's not really buses or uh, Amtraks out here. It's just way in the middle of nowhere. Town of 3,000 people, so yeah. Did find some old shoestring tags, rest in peace. Anyway, hopefully see you in Montana. To be confused with the regular yellow bird, the fucking yellow bird is known to fuck. Have you ever run into, uh, not like physically run into, but seen like those wild pigs in Texas, just like random wild boar and stuff? They'll kill you. Yeah. I've stayed in uh, Big Bend National Park, it's where the Rio Grande goes down into Mexico, it's beautiful. Um, and there were birds of wild peccaries. Uh -huh. There'd be like a dozen of them, and they would just tear ass through the campground, just like a cartoon. Was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, landscape here is pretty incredible. This is eastern slash central Washington, and I figured I'm just gonna take the ride with this guy all the way to Portland because I got to be in Seattle in a couple of days for my flight to Alaska and all of these railroad towns that we're passing i haven't really heard good things about and in my experience they're super low priority super slow very tricky to catch a train out there so just figured might as well do the hitch grab a bus to seattle and that's where i end the western journey plus having a couple days in portland there's some stuff i want to explore there that'll be a good way to close everything out but yeah, this is, other than that, kind of the last of the American West. It would be super easy to just go from Oakland to Portland in a straight shot, but I like the route I took a lot more. Got to see all the Western stuff I wanted to see for the most part, whether it was driving past it or via train. And I get to bike too. In situations like this right now, I'm on my way to the gas station gonna pick up some snacks, maybe some pizza, hot food, big luxury. Uh, although the terrain is ass, so 
Can't wait till I get to some actual gravel road. Anyway, see you guys later. All right, after hitchhiking through five states in five days with that dude who picked me up in Wyoming, I've landed in Portland, Oregon. And this is almost the conclusion of my trip out west. But for now, I think the big send off for me for today, for this whole trip, is to go down to the abandoned paper mill that's south of here try to get inside. They are doing some demolition work on it and turning it into something different. It's a cool city. I like the city. It's a place that celebrates diversity, except with the demographics of its people and except with diversity of opinion. They don't like that so much. But other than that, cool, cute little place to be, although it is what they say it is sometimes. But yeah, not gonna worry about that too much. Gonna go down, bike to this paper mill and, you know, probably get some of the last documentation of it before the thing gets completely kaput. So yeah, Let's see how it goes. Okay, there's the complex. There's the set of waterfalls that's the I believe the second largest in North America next to Niagara Falls. So let's go check it out, see the deal. All right, this all feels kind of sketchy, but let's do it. There's no way the bike is going down there, so we're just gonna have to leave it. Okay, I think I messed up. I think my target is actually supposed to be this on the other side of the river, so I'm gonna cross over. Yeah, I knew this felt a little sketchy. So, one thing I don't like is there is a dude at the entrance actively doing demolition. Probably the best way to enter. Yeah, this is all probably gonna turn into housing of some sort. All right, I'll park the bike and sneak in. This is gonna be tricky because there are actually people doing active demo work right now. So I gotta be a little careful. I think the strategy is just wait for a break in traffic on this side coming towards me, then hop the fence and walk the tracks. And speak of the devil, there's a train rolling by right now, so I'll let him do his thing. All right, and here's that break in traffic, so let's do it. don't have my uh, gloves on me and this infrastructure as you can see looks very sketchy Eesh. no idea what this is triangle shaped train thing if anyone knows let me know okay dangerous spot for sure question is how badly do I want it well, don't try this at home. That's all I'm gonna say. Okay, well, accessed one of the buildings. I feel like I made it too far not to. So, let's explore while we're here. There's my enemy. I can't even call them my enemy because they're just doing their job. But now I know where they are, so that gives me the edge. Door to nowhere. Straight drop. Alright, let me not waste time. Always good to have the aerial over them. Janky as hell. We 
I try to put myself in the other person's shoes because I've run from authority figures before and you know if I was doing what they were doing saw some kid where they shouldn't be I'd bark at them I'd do the exact same shit get them to skitter away and can say I did my job so I get it that said hopefully they're not gonna see me okay really don't trust the flooring here but I mean this whole complex is gonna be gone within probably a year so might as well show you guys what I can We got other people scoping the complex out as well. They just look like regular people. I don't know that they see me. But best believe they're trying to get into. Don't know that they'll be as successful. Again, this is what's making it sketchy. The fact that you can see them doing the active demo work. The excavator is still going, so. God damn. You guys got to take off, dude. It's like legally mandated at this point probably I guess they're in a rush to destroy the spot it's a lot of work to do I get it every time some authority figure has told me don't let me see you I've always interpreted that as code for just be sneakier literally don't let me see you and I won't have to say shit so that's how we're doing it Don't love this. That's okay. It's just part of the game. God. At a certain point, it's just playing the lottery, isn't it? As in how many times you can go to these places without falling through the floor. I guess in your day to day, there's an extent of that too. And the excavator keeps digging away, ushering in a new era of whatever America is going to be. And the boats float on obliviously. Catch you all later. I know nothing. Don't preempt. Blank face. Blank face.